Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we should have a chapter review to do. However, sadly, it was just not meant to be. And instead, the One Piece manga has been put on a sudden and rather lengthy break. So we're here to talk about why that is, as well as what it means for the One Piece manga going forward in the immediate future, because it does have some unfortunate consequences beyond just not being able to read the thing that it is that we like, such as impacting the release of the long-awaited chapter 1000. Before that though, don't forget to hit that long-awaited subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, which will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Plus, I've heard that pressing it will also give you supernatural powers. And at the time of this recording, it's hard to know whether or not that's strictly speaking true. So I suggest that you all press it for the sake of science and comment with your results down below. But onwards with the topic and first up, let's begin with the reasoning for the break. And as with most cases along these lines, it was because of author illness. Sergio Oda came down with something or had his physical or mental conditions otherwise affected, specific aren't given, in fact, they rarely are in Japanese public announcements, not that we really need them. But just before anybody freaks out, Shueisha, the publisher of One Piece and its serialization magazine, Weekly Shonen Jump, have made an announcement that Oda has already recovered from whatever the illness was. So that is obviously fantastic news, but it has thrown the publication schedule off a fair bit. And here is their statement, which has been translated by the Library of O'Hara on Twitter. One Piece was scheduled to be published on Weekly Shonen Jump issue 44 on sale October 5th, but we made the choice to cancel it out of concern concern for the author's physical condition after he fell suddenly sick. That said, the author's condition has currently recovered and serialization will resume in two issues from now, starting from issue 46 on sale October 17th. We hope everyone can understand. And I'm sure that we all do for the most part anyway. I mean, there are always going to be that group of people who will complain at great length that Oda takes far too many breaks even when he is legitimately ill. And I guess I really do want to emphasize that although this is a large and unexpected break, actually, let's, we should probably first flesh that out for a bit of context context because there were a lot of numbers in that statement, issues and dates and stuff. And if you're like me, you don't like numbers. So let's break that down. For some clarification, issue 44 is the one that was released today, which is currently Monday, October 5th for me here in Australia. Although I believe it is October 4th for Americans and Europeans. So this issue covers the first break and the next issue being 45 would then be released on October 12th for me being the 11th for most of you. Once again, wonderful American and European readers, but that is also a break, which means that the next time you should expect to see One Piece officially will be on October 17th for me and the 16th for most of you. Although leaks and spoilers are of course almost certainly going to emerge before then. But that will be the release of chapter 992. So I hope that clears things up a bit, maybe. Basically, October is going to be a bit dry for One Piece, which is a shame given what's currently happening in the manga, but it cannot be helped. Oda's health will always take precedent over everything as it should, even though I'm sure that he himself doesn't quite feel the same way. Which circles back quite nicely to a discussion I was about to get into, which is not to be worried for him due to to this break because there is indeed precedent for it happening a fair bit in the past. Although two weeks in a row is pretty exceedingly rare unless it gets coupled with a scheduled magazine break from Weekly Shonen Jump, which in this case it is not. Those generally happen around holidays like Golden Week and New Year's and all that sort of thing. But the more standard schedule tends to be three chapters of One Piece followed by a break week, and then three more chapters and then a break and so on and so forth into hopefully infinity, at least in normal times anyway. This year's release schedule certainly looks nothing like any other. But these roughly monthly breaks from Oda are more out of necessity than anything else. I'm fairly certain that Oda would prefer not to take any breaks at all if it were physically possible to do so. He is a very well-documented workaholic and just to give you a brief rundown of his daily schedule, and I just wanna prepare you now, you're going to be tired just hearing about this, but it's actually super simple. Essentially, he wakes up at 5 a.m. and then starts working as immediately as possible. Then throughout the day, he just continues to do that, taking only the most necessary breaks, such as eating and assumedly going to the bathroom and such. And eventually, Eventually that day will come to an end, but Oda's work day won't because he will continue to plan, write, draw, ink, or color until 2 a.m. the very next day, at which point he finally succumbs to exhaustion and then decides to nap for three hours before waking up to do it all again, hooray. And I quite frankly do not understand how it's possible for a human to live this way, although it's not unheard of. A lot of very well-known names throughout history have these mythical sleep regimes attached to them. A very famous one would be Leonardo da Vinci, who allegedly, instead of actually engaging in sleep, instead took a 20 minute nap every four hours. It's called the Uberman sleep cycle and I would not recommend it. Although the benefit would be an extra six hours of productivity. And really Oda's schedule isn't all that different from this. He has an extra hour of sleep and he does it all in one go, which means that he does theoretically get an extra five hours out of every day, totaling an extra 35 hours a week because he works seven days a week. In addition to that though, he already doesn't work a standard work day, which for many would be eight hours. Instead, he does closer to 18 to 20 hours a 
day factoring in breaks, so that is pure insanity. But the point of going through all of that is to ultimately land on the conclusion that not only are the monthly manga breaks necessary to facilitate its very existence, but if anything, they're nowhere near enough. However, they also bank on the idea that these are just rest breaks. But humans be humans, and they will get sick from time to time as well, which throws this entire strategy into chaos because Oda has very little time to rest, let alone to recover. And if I had to guess, I'd say that's why we find ourselves with a double break this time around. Oda has developed some sort of mild illness that has struck his incredibly abused body harder than it would an average human. And I guess I say this mostly to dismiss any ideas that he has been afflicted with, you know, a certain virus currently devastating the world, because for many, that two week time period is a suspicious coincidence. That's all it is though, a coincidence. And it's important to know that this two week break is for serialization in the magazine and not necessarily for Oda himself. In fact, it is almost certainly not going to be anywhere near that long for him. And to explain this a bit more, for consumers, it's probably very tempting to believe that manga just appears mostly out of thin air on a weekly basis, because the standard thought would be, well, it's a weekly magazine, so the author must have spent all week making that one chapter for me to read right now. But the reality of the situation is that they're working several chapters ahead. In fact, in a super old SBS segment, Oda revealed that his then work schedule was working four weeks in advance. The example he gave was that chapter 60 had just been published. Yes, chapter 60, because this comment is that old. But at the time, he had already completed a draft for chapter 63. He did also stress that this was his current schedule and that not every mangaka works the same way, but it would certainly be similar. And let's have a fun example of what this means. Let's say that chapter 992 is going to be published right here, right now, as it should have. At the exact same time of this release, what's happening is that Shueisha is in the process of printing next week's magazine, which contains chapter 993. And they need to do that as early as possible in order to ship the magazines across Japan, which we know for a fact happens extraordinarily early because these shipped magazines are where all the leaks, spoilers, and scans originate from, which generally means that magazines have started to hit stores about half a week before they're allowed to be sold. Now, simultaneously at this point, chapter 994 would also need to be in its stages of editing. And by that, I mean out of the author's hands entirely. What I mean by that is it's being compiled into the source file for the next magazine to go to print, adding in text and dialogue and whatever else needs to be digitally layered. Meanwhile, once again, at the same time, a final draft for chapter 995 would need to be well and truly in a state of completion so that it can be ready to ink and so that assistants can begin working on it, drawing in backgrounds, characters, and whatever other work is assigned to them. And at this point, the author would also need to be drawing their drafts for chapter 996, submitting it to editors for approval so that it can be prepared for the production process next week. And yeah, it's a lot to get your head around, but in an ideal world, by the time any given chapter has been officially released, the author is almost certainly turning their attention to structuring events that are four chapters in the future. And of course, breaks do impact this by adding in gaps here and there, but it doesn't really change the necessary process. It just delays it, ideally to allow Oda to rest or at least work, but a bit more casually. But why that process is valuable to know is because it gives us some great insight into the decision-making process by Shueisha here. This was a very sudden action, meaning that chapter 9 992 is 100% complete and was complete at the release date of 991. And in fact, 993 is probably in a solid state of completion as well. And so they certainly could have released chapter 992 in issue 44, although it would have caused problems further down the line. Because Oda's illness hasn't caused problems with those, it's caused problems with chapters 994, perhaps even 995, and delaying their production process. So from Shueisha's perspective, it was probably a better reason to hold off on releasing 992 so that they can maintain a solid production cycle which was impacted by Oda's illness. However, I will say that it does strike me as a bit odd that a double break was deemed necessary, especially since we should have been approaching a standard Oda break. So there is some mystery there, although it could be something very simple and administrative, like having two breaks in a row in order to ensure a more steady chunk flow of chapters, rather than having them more divided like they have been for much of this year. Which brings us nicely to the future, where we now get to discuss the impending chapter 1000. And quite frankly, with this development, it is all but confirmed that we will not be making it to that stage in 2020. Starting with the next issue containing One Piece, we will have 11 weeks left of the year, the final week of which is a scheduled break for Weekly Shonen Jump. So that leaves us with 10 issues to work with, which at face value sounds like a pretty perfect amount, but it isn't, because that would assume no standard Oda breaks. And kind of funnily enough, before this announcement was made by Shueisha, Oda stated his ambition in the author comment section of the magazine, which was the following. Since the process has been adjusted because of the virus, we're trying for three chapters every four weeks, or two chapters every three weeks. The goal is to reach chapter 1000 by the end of the year. And we came ever, ever so close to doing just that. At the moment, the estimates being made would place us at chapter 999 by the end of 2020. 
So wow, that really was close and it does hammer home that without 2020 being 2020, we would have quite comfortably reached that milestone. As it is though, it looks like we'll need to celebrate chapter 1000 as part of the new year fun times in 2021, which you know, it's not all that bad. Yes, it would have been nice to do so this year, but it just wasn't meant to be. There's really not much that can be done about illness. In fact, with Otis' horrendous work schedule, I'm surprised that he doesn't get caught up by sickness much more often. With that said, chapter 1000 is still eagerly anticipated and I would like to do a series of videos videos in the lead up to it, so keep your eye out for those. And also please do comment with any suggestions you may have to celebrate that momentous occasion whenever it may be. But I hope this video gave you a solid idea of why One Piece is on break, when to expect it back, and just a general sense of gratitude for the insanity that this single man goes through simply to entertain us on a weekly basis. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business. I'll Loaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Ground Line Review, and I'll see you next time.